you moved to Aqua United. Just when you were, yeah. you know, becoming like the top man in Aqua United, you moved from Aqua United mm -hmm. to Europe. Come, yeah. who, who is responsible oh, for doing, who did your magic? Who did your, who did all these things? How did uh -huh. it happen? <laughs> I can say, you know, um, just have to work and if you have right people behind you, everything can fall at, uh, into place. Um, uh, me playing from Aqua United, just doing my job. So I don't know other people are there waiting. I have to give credit to Melvin Chalova. He introduced me to, to his agency. He, he working with base soccer. And um, at that time, there was a Nigerian playing in Austria called Larry um, Wajukayo. Did you call him Larry? Yeah. A lot of Nigerian know him. Larry Wajukayo, yeah. play for the national team. Yeah. So, a base soccer broke a deal for him to move to, to Man City. So, and uh, in his place, like Austria, looking for his replacement, and Melvin introduced me. And uh, that's how when I get the opportunity to go from Aqua United to Austria. I didn't go there on trials. I did. I just went there and I met Melvin was there in the airport, although Austria have sent someone to pick me up in the airport. But, but Melvin flew from England direct to um, Austria in Vienna and he waited for me in the airport. They, they pick us up to the hotel the next day, had my um, medicals and I signed one year loan with the option of uh, four years at the end. So it's, it's really, really, I have to give credit to him because he really see to it. He worked hard. He, I was in Nigeria. He was there doing my videos. He has to call someone from in Nigeria, get all our games in Aqua United do a video for me all the goals all the action and everything and he used that to to introduce me to to his contact in europe and okay, that so, was how it started so, so melvin melvin uh cheloba yeah. who is the uncle to nathaniel cheloba that played for uh chelsea what made one? all this happen now there's yeah. this thing there's this thing they yeah. say about footballers uh if you have a good team around you uh everything will be fine do you think that yeah. melvin being around you is the reason why everything has been okay with you like this yeah honestly speaking yes i can say yes because if you have a you have to build that relationship between you and your manager not only like a family relationship that a lot of things that you can be free to talk to your agent not only about football someone that has experience in life more than you are he come through he has the privilege to see his his nephew and um, um, chaloba not grow so a lot of things that he sees from uh, not he can advise me good and the bad things of it you know he can he's just like a guardian to me not only a manager so when you have that relationship with your manager, I think everything will be okay because you can be uh, free to speak to him and he can come to you. You can go to him with anything you want. You guys sit together and talk to, and get a uh, possible advice that you need to, not only in football. So he's always there for me. He's doing his job and he only want to make sure that I am okay mentally, physically, and good to go. When I go onto the pitch, I do what I know how to do best. Yeah. Talk to me about your move to Portugal. Okay, um, so my loan expired at the end. I was playing all the games. Like I played 26 or more games in my season in, 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 in Austria. I couldn't believe it when they didn't took the option of, of, of me sealing a permanent deal. Because I was playing, I play Europa, I play all the games since I joined, I play really good. So along the way, we don't win games, we change coach, you know, change system. Almost, I think, 13 players out of the team at the end of the season. And I was one of these players to leave because I had only one year loan. And the loan expire and they don't take the option. They want to maybe take a new 
um, may, I don't know what they want to do, but they changed the team maybe completely or more than 13 players were out. Among is that my friend I told you from Ghana, um, uh, Abdul Kadir Mohammed, but we call him Kadi. So okay. that was what happened. And Melvin, we're trying to see the opportunities. We have some opportunities here and there. Then flew from England to Portugal. As a coach in a club that I first came because I didn't um, came to Portugal for national. I came for a rival club called Maritimo in the same Madeira Island. Yeah. So the coach spoke to Melvin. He wants me to, to, to come. And I came. We go there as maybe I was coming for, for two weeks trial. That was the agreement. I flew from Nigeria. I met Melvin here and we didn't train. For four days, I always go to the stadium, excuses here and there. They, they don't want to me to train because they are afraid whether Austria can demand a training compensation or something like that, which is not so. So yeah. we don't know. And uh, they bring a contract. We sign, agree of everything. And I join the club, start training. Within two weeks, then um, they don't want to honor the agreement with, with us. Because in the contract also is in Portuguese. We do, I mean, yes, in Portuguese. We demand an English version of it. And yeah. they, they couldn't bring it. So we signed. After two weeks, we notice inconsistency in the agreement. And in the, in the, in the um, contract, they write within one month, that's 30 days, if they want they can terminate the contract, which is in the law of Portugal League, which yeah. I don't know. My manager, Melvin, don't know about it. And if I don't want, in, as a player also, I can terminate the contract and with or without the consent of the other party, you know? So we were shocked why they put that in the contract and they didn't let us know, you know? Wow. And they don't want to honor agreement. <laughs> Opportunities are coming. We took the option and we terminated the contract. That's how I moved and I changed to, to national. Um, honestly, so, I wasn't coming to national when yeah. we decided to, to say, okay, we walk away from the contract or we terminate it. I'm going like Belgium or something. There is a club in Belgium. Then this half national... Um, um, came within 24 hours or something, and we signed contract. Yeah. Let's let's bring on board Marvin Shalova. You know, I I wanted to make this a surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanted to bring him on board, and a surprise to you. Now, is this the Marvin Shalova that you've been talking about, or I brought this? Ah, okay. Is that Marvin? Can you hear us? Yeah, is he Yes, I can, I can hear yeah. you. I can hear you. <laughs> okay, so we've been gossiping about you. We've been talking about the wonderful <laughs> things you did and the one that you didn't do well. Um, Melvin, uh, please, you have to go to you have to go to school and learn how to how to read in Portuguese so that next time you can read Portuguese content very well. <laughs> I'm, I'm already fluent. I'm, I'm it's already difficult, fluent. huh? Sorry. Okay, so so uh, believe me, for this is difficult. But but I was in Brazil. I was in Brazil for five weeks, and in that five weeks, I think I was picking up uh, a few Portuguese language. I mean, barely passable language. Like I want to eat. I want to buy something. I mean, the <laughs> let me tell you what happened to me in Brazil. Okay, I went to Brazil. Yeah, and, that is okay. That is okay to learn. But but believe me, believe me. To speak really fluently Portuguese is difficult. Yeah, I agree. Difficult. I agree. they can speak and you understand what you to speak. You know, ah. you have to uh, practice, but it's difficult. Okay, so uh, to be honest with you, Melvin, let me come to you now. Uh, Alassane has told me how you walk wonders. You were in London. He was playing for Aqua. You got all his tape together, and you made it possible for him to go on loan to Austria Bien without trials. He came in today. The next day, he signed for one year, and and I'm 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 thinking. I have a lot of young footballers in Nigeria who always want to go pro. Now, Alasan, this question is to you. 
would you advise a okay. young footballer in Nigeria, anybody that is playing in Nigerian league, he's here. So say it to his mm-hmm. face. He can't beat you. He protects you. Is is would you yeah. advise any young footballer to go under the management of Melvin Shalova? Yeah, definitely I can advise them because he's not only a, a manager. I told you, he's not only an agent. I mean, he's manager. He's managing me based on the experience I, I, I had and I'm still having with him. He's my manager, not only on the pitch and the other issues. If I have any problem or something that I want to, um, maybe I want more clarity, I can go to him and ask him. And if he sees something, before I even um, ask him, he used to call me and we discussed like a family. So you need someone to back you up, to work with you. As All right, Melvin. Melvin, there is... Not, yeah. not so. Okay. Melvin, there is, there is something that every young African struggle with, especially Africans from the West Coast. And by the West Coast, I mean... Liberia, Sierra Leone, Mali, Gambia, Senegal, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, Nigeria, the Republic, you know, all of this, and even Cameroon, you know, you, you can add Cameroon at the rest. They go to Europe, mm-hmm. they struggle with the language, the food, the culture, wow. the orientation. Yeah. You know, because when you're coming from Africa, you, you are like George Floyd, the knee of the weight of your family and friends is on your neck. The knee of everybody is on your neck, expecting you to go make the money and bring it back. Then when you go to Europe, it's different. It's all man to himself. And you have to learn a whole lot of things very fast because maybe your trial is three weeks. Within three weeks, if you don't fit in, you're coming back. And then when you come back home, you're seen as a disgrace, a failure. You don't even know how to play football. You went to Europe. That is the longest trial you can go up, three weeks. Some can be 10 days. Some can be one week. Good. So, Melvin, what's the advice as as somebody who lives in Europe, you have a nephew who plays for a big club like Chelsea, you've seen this thing, you work with one of the biggest sports management brands in the world. Uh, Bay, what's the name of the the, the management again? It's uh, Base Soccer, um, but we're also part of CAA Sports. Good. So, you work with this big management outfit. What are the challenges you've noticed with young Africans coming to Europe? And how do we create an educational system that integrates them into European football without them getting lost? Yeah. Okay. First of all, thank you very much for having me on your show. And Ibrahim, thank you very much for for your description of, of, you know, the support I've given you. You, you, know, you know he's my boss at the end of the day. He's the one, he's the one who pays my, my, I agree. my bills now. So I've got to be very careful also what I say. <laughs> no, on a, on a serious note, um, you know, the, the, the challenge for a young African footballer coming to Europe is no different to the challenge of any African coming to Europe, as a matter of fact. Um, you know, you've got, you've got to integrate, you've got to learn the culture, you've got to learn how they speak. Um, there's a lot of challenges, especially nowadays, as you know, with all the problems in the world, there's competition. And then on top yeah. of that, as you said, there's the weight of expectations of you coming to Europe, providing for your family, you know, um and basically living up to the very high high levels of expectation that everybody has that the moment you've landed you've become ronaldo or messi um now the reality is you know my my focus is more on the management um, of these young aspiring athletes who at the end of the day are also normal human beings um but with even more pressure when you come i always say you have to adapt to the weather, you have to adapt to the competition within um, the club itself. You don't just come in and go straight in with the starting 11. First, you have to train with the team, you have to get to use the down systems, then you have to train with the second team, the reserves, then you have to train with the first team, then you have to make the team to travel, then you have to be consistent and patient until you finally get your break. When you get your break, you have to be performing. And then, you know, 
you look at the stories of many, you know, I'll, ju I'll just quote a few, of course, Victor Simon is very, um, is trending at the moment, but look at his journey. He didn't just suddenly go to Europe and he was successful. Um, now the journey that I've been with, um, with, with Moazam, with Ibrahim has been one that we're still learning. Uh, we're still trying, we're still progressing to put ourselves in a position where Ibrahim really has, Moazam really has the opportunity to show his talent. And like any club, when you go, there's a structure, there's a politics, you have to go in. As I said, you have to be patient, you have to understand the coaches as his own players. Uh, through your quality and your patience and through God, you have to wait for your own opportunity. So the work actually starts from home. Uh, I think with a lot of young African players, as you've seen, they're always very successful, especially in Nigeria, has a history of being successful in the Olympics. I'm at on the 17 level, Ivory Coast, Ghana, all these countries, always Mali now, they always do well, um, Senegal. But then something happens in the transition and what actually happens is, again, this element of now going to a new place, you know, you're in Africa, you're the king, you come back from the 17 World Cup, you know, you're the king, and then suddenly you're in Europe, and you're last, you're bottom on the list, and you have to now make your way up. So it's all in your mentality. If you arrive and you think because you've, you've, you've done the trial and you've already made it, then you've already failed. Um, I always say you've only made it when you sign your second pro contract. So in other words, the moment you arrive in Europe, actually it gets tougher because the level of competition goes all up. Um, and if you don't keep on running and if you take your foot off the gas, the moment you do that, there's, there's, the, there's the next African player, there's the next European player, South American player who's there and he's not joking. So all I'm doing, like what I've done with Moazam, is to just keep reminding him to keep up his discipline, you know, he's a human being at the end of the day. You miss your family. You, you're alone over there. And these things must be taken into consideration. Players need support. But at the same time, you need a player who's going to listen. You need a player who's disciplined and understands that the, the hustle and the challenge continues. And you actually have to improve. Now, the reality of, of, of the hardship of playing football in Africa, you know, the, the, the tackles, the, 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 you know, the, the hustle, it's that must be maintained and added on top, on the technical side, especially when you come to, to Europe, like listening to tactics, understanding that it's about the stats um, instead of just dribbling. You know, it's, it's slight changes. And somebody like Ibrahim, it's a pleasure working with him because he's a scholar. He's listening. He, he, he listens to everything you say. We look at the stats of, for example, in Didi, um, and all these people who play in his position, as, be, as he's been moved now to playing as a number six, as we all know, he used to be an attacking player. That's no easy task. And that requires a lot of concentration, watching games, you know, and I make sure I provide all this information to Ibrahim. We discuss it as a team. We look at videos and then we see how best we can also use that aspect to adapt. So it's, it's a work in progress. We're both working together. It's not just me. It's a combination of me and Moazam working together. Um, he's now back in, in the top, top league in, in, in Portugal. We have a great opportunity. Um, but, you know, I'm speaking to him every week. He's already in the gym. You know, he's already getting ready for the season to start. Um, we haven't been in this position in the previous years. But this year, you know, it takes time for the players to adapt. So there also needs to be a certain level of patience from home, from the fans, you know, supporting the player as he goes up and down. Um, and then understand that when they get to a certain stage, then they can evolve. Then you can see the progression of that player. So that's my job as a manager, to just make sure he's okay mentally, you know, psychologically, even spiritually sometimes, you know. We're Africans at the end of the day. Um, so that he can be in a place where he's got peace of mind and he can focus on the big task of, of breaking into that team and staying there and keep improving because, of course, we have our targets much higher. Um, and that's the advice I can give to any young player. Listen, stay focused, um, make sure you have people around you and you value the right ones, not about your, your, your swag. <laughs> and about your Instagram, how you look and all of that stuff. Focus on, on the numbers, the statistics, and focus in understanding them and how you can apply them. Uh, there's this thing I always want to ask. 
uh, like I don't call you agent, but you're a manager. How do you advise players when it comes to money management? Because the biggest problem for an African footballer is what happens after retirement. And I've been talking to quite a lot of people. This afternoon, I was doing an Instagram live with Sheyo Lofinjana of Wolverhampton Wanderers, former Super Eagles players for 10 years. And he played in a lot of clubs in, in England. And we're just talking about a lot of things and the disconnect after retirement. What stage should a player start planning for retirement? Because no matter how you play, one of the things I've discovered with football is mm. you cannot train your children to university before you retire from football. If you like, mm. use your children early. Your children cannot graduate from university before you retire from football. So there is a whole lot. So the rest of the time, take it and educate us, Melvin. What stage of a footballer's okay. career should he start planning for retirement and how does the plan work? Okay, I mean, this is just my own personal experience and, and it applies to, to anybody, to any African. You know, with our culture, it's very hard, with our culture and the challenges, it's very hard to save. And it's not something that a lot of people focus on. So that habit of saving has to start the minute you get your first paycheck. You know, by default, you know, our culture dictates that you have to send home. You have to send everything home, okay? And of course, you know, myself having family back home in Sierra Leone, um, the, the, the urge, the, the intention, and what you've been taught is to send everything home. But the reality is if you send everything home and then you suddenly have an emergency, what can you then send? You don't have anything to send. And ultimately, when you can send, um, then people might have the wrong idea, think you, you don't want to send, so I think it's a discussion that needs to be had with the family, you know, mom, dad, girlfriend, and you, you yourself, what I would advise is whatever money you have, that you keep a certain portion you save, basically. And, you know, there's, you know, when you go, you want to just be shopping, 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 shopping. But if you can have the discipline, and again, this education needs to start from home, and everybody understands that, you know, when something goes wrong, you need a little bit for yourself. You need a little bit of backup to be able to send in case there's an emergency. So as an answer to what you're saying, I think it starts from your first paycheck. Okay. Thank you um, very much. And again, you've got people, yes, you've got, you, you can go and, and get some advice, you know, from a bank manager, etc. But actually the dialogue and the understanding with the family at home that matters. That's my opinion. Yeah.